Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for November 20th, 2020, recorded around 1.40 p.m. Eastern Time. While taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, finally, for the first time in a very long time, everything is fairly quiet across the Atlantic Basin. Uh, you notice there's no significant areas of concentrated vorticity here, nothing really bundling Maybe some semblance of an area to watch out here, uh, maybe towards later in the week out in this region. Uh, but this is a very low chance. Again, you can see where this frontal boundary is actually draped across here. Uh, so behind it, you're getting a lot of cold air advection that's kind of coming down here. You can see all this cold air uh, behind this occluded uh, area of low pressure back here. And you can also very clearly see the very dry conditions across this area. There's some rain showers across portions of uh, east central Florida today because of a, a sharp uh, lapse rate at the very surface, but it gets cooler uh, as you go up and that lapse rate drops off as well as the moisture. So these are not very uh, tall thunderstorms and they're not even storms really at all, just some light rain showers around across there. Now, again, we could talk about this area right here. This, you know, only has a 10% chance. There's the island of Bermuda right there. And generally, this area kind of encompasses that vicinity, but only a 10% chance. I'm not really uh, worried about this going on to be a, a tropical storm or hurricane by that matters. Again, this will likely be uh, just some string of vorticity that gets pulled up into a mid-latitude cyclone and moves out across here and then maybe impacts maybe Greenland and Ireland towards uh, portions of next week. So that is something that we can talk about uh, down the road from there. So why is everything quiet right now? Well, we can look at the grand scheme of things. This is what we're looking at here. This is the convectively coupled Kelvin wave map. And what we're really looking for typically for rising air in the atmosphere would be all this blue and some purple colors in here. Uh, and your General yellows and oranges, these are going to be suppressive phases of the Kelvin waves. They typically uh, do not allow for hurricane development in the Atlantic or anywhere where they're across, really. Now, we can see that we have a convectively, a positive Kelvin wave, a positive convectively coupled Kelvin wave that is passing over the central Atlantic right now, and that is helping to invigorate some shower and thunderstorm activity along the intertropical convergence zone. Uh, which is right along in this vicinity. You can kind of see that intertropical convergence zone. However, it's squashed. It, it is now further south. Again, typically, as the year goes on, you'll start to see this move northward. And then as we get into the late fall and winter months, this intertropical convergence zone will now push southward. And you'll get all your thunderstorms along the belt and across here. So you'll get tropical waves that roll across here. Uh, but sooner rather than later, we're going to see this kind of shut down and we won't get any waves that come across the Atlantic uh, for quite some time. So it's it's going to be, uh, the Atlantic uh, is basically over at this point. You can see this Kelvin wave is also invigorating some showers and storms right along the convergence zone along the front. Uh, but behind this active phase, you're going to have the suppressive phase of the Kelvin wave quickly pass into the Western Atlantic then over most of the Atlantic and into Africa, and then parts of interior Africa. So this is basically going to shut down this vicinity of any tropical cyclone development over the next uh, several days. And we can also take a look at the vertical wind shear profile in the atmosphere. And this is a kind of a cool map here. Uh, very easy to read, just kind of showing the large scale unfavorable pattern in the Atlantic. And again, because we've had this front, uh, this cold front that has dipped across here, uh, a lot of northwest flows kind of behind this front. And ahead of this front, you're getting a lot of this wind coming from west to east. So you've got a convergence zone that's kind of maximized uh, right around uh, portions right near Cuba. Uh, you can kind of see this area of maximized uh, shear right across Cuba. And then it does taper off the further south you end up going. But generally, most of the Caribbean is unfavorable. The Gulf of Mexico is unfavorable. The only favorable pattern and area right now is off the southeast coast right now with only about 15 knots of shear. So generally favorable conditions there, except we have a lot of cool air in this environment. So you're not going to get thunderstorms that rapidly develop in this part of the, the environment right now. And because of this cold air and this, this very cold air infection, you're not going to get 
thunderstorms to develop and concentrate. So tropical cyclone development likely has been uh, neutralized for the rest of the hurricane season this year. Very good news for sure. Now we can look at this here on the GFS 850 millibar map here. This is looking at the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And what we'll look at here, again, you have a fairly stout ridge that's in place across most of the Western Atlantic right now. This is kind of that dying front out across in this vicinity and a ridge that is developing back behind it. So you can also kind of see where we have this general area of low pressure and another trough out across here with an area of low pressure out across here. So you're getting uh, kind of an occluded front all the way back here because the actual cold front, uh, it relatively seems like that cold front is going to be positioned out about here and your warm front is something much like that. So that's kind of the fronts there and you possibly have an occluded front kind of going back into this area of low pressure out across there. Uh, now, over the next several days, we can see this ridge is going to start to slide generally towards the east while kind of eroding on the western side as we get another trough that comes in through here, another shortwave energy trough that's going to kick across here. And this is going to skirt once again out here across the Atlantic. So our ridge is going to be weakening. Uh, we also have another ridge developing on across the Atlantic. Uh, maybe some area of vorticity here, but this is mid-latitude junk really, not really expecting much development. Now, here is what we're looking at here. This is the vorticity uh, that is popping out here north of Bermuda and moving generally northeastward. Uh, now, you can see at this time we have a broad upper level system here, an upper level low, and we also have this piece of energy here. Uh, now, water temperatures in this region are generally not favorable for development. Uh, water temperatures uh, in this part of the world are at about 20 degrees Celsius, so this would likely be anything subtropical or fully mid-latitude energy. And of course, this uh, energy right here near uh, Maine is fully uh, mid-latitude. Uh, but we can see again, generally prevailing easterlies across here. So not really much going on. Strong trade winds out across this region, which we would expect for this time of the year. So not really expecting much. Um, and even in the eastern Pacific now, there is an area of convergence here. This is far out in time, 222 hours from now. Uh, there might be an area of generalized vorticity in the eastern Pacific. We've got another front coming across here. You can kind of see a cold front draped right across in this vicinity and a warm front that is sort of like that. So that's kind of our fronts there. But again, this is looking pretty far out in time. So not really expecting anything in the Atlantic or the eastern Pacific. What about the West Pacific? So this is the GFS forecast, same 850 millibar map for the Western Pacific. We have never really talked about Western Pacific storms, uh, but we'll start getting into it here. You can see a lot of mid-latitude energy, uh, a very big, strong cold front uh, coming across into portions of Alaska uh, within the next uh, several days or so. This is uh, moving out here. This will actually develop into some mid-latitude cyclonic uh, energy out here across uh, portions of Alaska and then move uh, generally northeastward with time. A big stout ridge over much of the Western Pacific and not really anything developing out here with uh, time so far. However, there is a little bit of an area that does try to develop here uh, in the Western Pacific closer to land. This is well far out in time and then just kind of gets skirted along northward uh, like this as it kind of prevails, but not really seeing anything in there. The European forecast model is rather much of the same. You can see a big area here of uh, vorticity coming out across Africa, or not Africa, across Alaska. And if we actually switch back here and look at the Alaska map, we can see a very cold air coming across. This is the uh, 500 millibar geopotential height. And uh, we can really see that there's a lot of cold air in this part of the environment. Uh, down here into the 490s. So this is representative of very cold polar air. We can see that some of this polar air is going to be working southward too with time. Uh, and we can see this big shot of polar air that might actually make it down into somewhat of the continental United States regions uh, within the next uh, couple of weeks as we have several areas of low pressure driving pressure falls uh, across most of there. And if we actually look down there uh, in, we'll go towards the Southwest United States. 
we can see that we have some very strong stout cold air across the Midwest. And uh, that is going to be generally much of the theme across Australia. Not much else going on across here. You can see there's really not uh, anything that we're looking for in terms of tropical cyclone activity across Australia. So that will certainly be nice. So the global tropics are generally very quiet for now. Only two invests right now across the uh, whole entire uh, basin of any uh, one particular basin right now. So that's certainly some good news. Uh, other than that, it remains fairly quiet. Um, we are going to be starting working on the 40, lower 48 weather over the next several days or so. And what this is going to basically, uh, you know, combine with is this is going to kind of uh, go over, you know, the lower 48 weather across the United States. We'll also look at some other uh, countries as well and depict their weather. We're going to start to go more in depth with winter weather and other things like that. So if you guys, uh, you know, want to see that, make sure you stick around on the channel. Keep watching these videos and uh, make sure to join the Patreon if you guys want to support uh, what content we're doing. All right, with that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.